Sega. Castle Illusion, one of the best-selling Genesis games of all time. It's the perfect game for us to develop with Disney. It's such a classic. People love Castle of Illusion. They've got such fond memories of it. Really passionate about the game and the, the experience that I had when I was young, and to try and offer that to the new generation and, and, and people that have experienced it before is a, yeah, it's just a, a great feeling, really. There is definitely something about Disney which I don't think any other brand has quite captured. It's Disney. It's a, it's a descriptive word in itself. Disney's re renowned for its, uh, for its characters, for its visuals, for its animation, it's for its music. Everything that Disney touches has an air of magic to it, and they, they try to, uh, as a company, try and en encompass that in all their products. It doesn't matter if you're a core gamer, family gamer, whatever the gamer, um, you need to capture that sense of enjoyment, passion. I was a child, I bought it. It was one of my favorite games. I played it to death. I grew up with my Mega Drive. I've played all the uh, classic uh, Disney games. And Castle of Illusion stands up as one of my all-time favorites. 20 years later, to be given the opportunity to work on that IP, to reimagine it and bring it forward with today's technology was just, you know, an, an amazing opportunity. For us, it was important to just respect the original. In, in as many ways as we could. What we wanted to do was just improve upon areas that we can improve upon because we've got new technology, we've got new systems, a new tool set. We have to be very careful not to go and run with the game in a completely different direction. We have to embrace what was good about it to begin with. You'll see all the same uh, familiar characters, you'll see the familiar worlds. All the themes that you remember in the original game are there. We've kept to the original in such a way that Disney can, can recognize it immediately. They recognize the, the tree stump and they smile. They go, that's, that's exactly what we're looking for. I think I employ 35 people that love Mickey. So um, making them happy, I think, is a good indication that the audience is going to be happy. He's a stoic little guy. He never really gets too bothered by things. He's, he's always willing to give it a go. It's very brave, but at the same time, very kind. He's quite charming in the way he approaches things, and we really wanted to capture a lot of that charm from Mickey that you see in the old kind of Mickey cartoons. Obviously, there's, there's a little bit of pressure there for uh, making him awesome because it's Mickey Mouse, and he's, you know, the biggest character in the world. We are not going to reinvent Mickey. We have to respect the style of Mickey, the look and feel, the characteristics, the animation cycles, the walk cycles. And not only that, but from an artistic point of view, we have great concept artists that have been able to really capture the look of Mickey, um, how, what he meant in Castle of Illusion in the Mega Drive era, and how do we bring a flavor of that into the new modernized version, but without changing him so much that he distinctly looks like a different Mickey Mouse. The world itself is like, it's enchanting, uh, it's rich and full. I think one thing that I always sort of think about Disney is that at a word or a spell, something's gonna come to life. You know, just off to the corner, you know, something could just pop to life and, and come at you. The library is the first level where I've got a Disney moment. I'm jumping on the books. There's a puff of smoke, the dust. The, the books fall beneath my feet and there's an enemy, and there's an A. It's a letter A, and it's attacking me. I don't know many games where a letter can actually scare a grown man. You just never know what's going to happen around the next corner. I think that's, that's something that really keeps you engaged as a player. We didn't really diverge too much in the story. It's a very true Disney story. Uh, Miserable has come upon uh, Mickey and Minnie out sort of having fun in the forest, like dancing away, and she's taken by Minnie's beauty and wants it for herself, so she steals her away, and Mickey, being the, the, the hero, little boyfriend, <laughs> is, you know, runs off and, and uh, chases after her, and he gets dragged into this castle uh, of illusion where, where Miserable has set up all these traps. Uh, for those that know the original, to, to see what we've done with it, and for those that don't, for, for the new kids and anyone else that uh, is new to the, new to the IP, um, and enough there to give them a little bit more of a story uh, from start to finish. I like that. That's, that's pretty cool. I think
think for almost 100 years now, Disney have been um, pioneering so many things with animation and audio, and the key for me was synchronizing them together. Audio and music is a, is a massive part of, the, of Disney itself, and that's something we take very seriously. So for us, it was important that we, again, tried to pursue certain sounds that made sense to the, to the environment that uh, Mickey was in. When making a new modern Castle of Illusion, we're able to use the old Castle of Illusion as liberal as we need to. Um, and it's actually been quite nice to take the entire original 16-bit um, track and use them in the modern version as well. But sometimes by retaining that low fidelity, that's part of its charm of its style. So I do think it's important to retain that. Although we have cleaned it up a little bit, it still retains that original character. We have had the opportunity to allow Mickey to speak. You know, this was something that we felt passionately about, having him interact in the story. Hey, come down here! From a sound perspective, we've been able to help it into the 21st century by, I think, primarily, we're able to do a lot more with the sound effects, the mixing, um, the environmental effects. I mean, these are all things that we come to expect without realizing it. So we're able to go further with interactive music and we can have more dynamic things going along with the sound effects and the voice as well. Castle of Illusion, you know, is built from the ground up. You know, from every point, from animations to music to environment to gameplay, everything is built from the ground up. And that's a really nice, exciting way of taking something that everyone holds dear to them and kind of improving that for the new generation. I, I think they'll love it. I mean, I, we, we love it. <laughs>